Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The third thing we learn from Paul is that as abundant as this power is, please listen now, it says it is according to the power that works in us. These possibilities beyond what we ask, beyond what we think is limited by a rule. I want you to listen now. The rule is that it is affected by the power that works in us. Not the power available to work. The power that works in us. Not the power available to work. There is limitless power available to work. But what the nations will see is the power that works in us not the power available in Christ are we learning now this is very powerful I wrote something here and I want you to please listen according to the power that works in us means limited by the allowance that our consecration our yieldedness and our personal press gives the spirit when the Bible says according to the power that works in us it means God can be constrained. His power can be limited by the space that the saints give for that power to flow out. Limited. Limited. By the allowance that our consecration, limited by the allowance that our yieldedness, limited by the allowance that our personal press gives the spirit to manifest that power wow now we come to the subject of the holy spirit and the believer here paul haven't justified the fact that god is all powerful and he's willing to allow such tremendous dimensions of his power to show up in the world of men he wants to get glory in the church and the way he gets glory in the church is to make tremendous power available which is dynamic in its working but he's saying that in as much as that is a reality the power that comes out through every believer is the dimension of power that the nations will see that means if they see a weak Jesus that weak Jesus came through the lens of a weak believer. Are we together now? It is according to the power that worketh in us. For many years, I did not understand that scripture. I just meant it's according to the power that flows from the Holy Spirit. And that is correct. But then I got to understand by the Spirit that it is beyond that. It means the allowance that is given to the Holy Spirit by every believer is the limit to which his power flows like a river now i have taught you here that the holy spirit listen carefully is both the custodian and the conveyor of god's power the holy spirit is both the custodian and the conveyor everything power is within his office the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit it is impossible to do and discuss the business of power isolating the person the office and the ministry of the Holy Spirit Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed the word the word was anointed had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all that that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Jesus as the word had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost there is mentioned again Acts chapter 19 from verse 2 he met certain disciples and he said have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed and they said we've not even heard that means if there is a power problem within the believers there is something about the ministry of the Holy Spirit that believers need to learn 
we have understood the word and honestly i tell you commendably there is a very sound communication of god's word across the body but i think that most people have not come to appreciate the person and the ministry of the holy spirit i am personally convinced that that is one of the the missing links we have not incorporated a thorough knowledge of the person and the ministry of the holy spirit we understand principles nothing wrong with that we understand mysteries nothing wrong with that but we have not engaged the person and the office of the spirit to make tremendous power available through us there is none of these people the saints especially in modern history who have been used mightily by god they were people of the world but they will tell you that they were people who understood and had a rich fellowship with the holy spirit i do not know anybody who works in authentic power at any level who has not cultivated a rich fellowship with the holy spirit are we together the holy spirit is both the conveyor the custodian and even the administrator of god's power romans chapter 8 and verse 2 i believe please give it to us there's a there's a name i like what the holy spirit is called here the holy spirit is called the spirit of life say that after me the spirit he's not just called the helper the advocate the paraclet as we call it he is called here the spirit of life and that there is an operation that powers him in the life of the believer is called the law of the spirit of life an operation that releases the full potential of the spirit of life and it can bring freedom and liberty to men let me tell you this i credit a lot of the happenings in my life and this ministry today to the ministry of the holy spirit i do not ignore the word of god this ministry is called koinonia there is a reason why it is called the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship the sharing together the participation of the holy spirit to rest and to abide with you forever many believers have not come into rich fellowship with the holy spirit the holy spirit let me repeat one last time is the custodian the conveyor and even the administrator of the power of god if there is scarceness of power flowing through you in diagnosing the problem you need to diagnose your relationship with the holy spirit and then diagnose your yieldedness let me say this very quickly when it has to do with the ministry of life and power the holy spirit is called a river jesus began to speak and he made a very profound statement he said on the third day of the feast he said if anyone thirst let him come let him drink and he said that out of his belly listen carefully i know you sing it but now just listen because many people who sing that song don't honestly know what they are singing they just like the song and they believe it is true but he says out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters i think that should be john 7 am i right verse 30 is it 39 look for it for me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water verse 39 now says this speak he this speak he of the spirit this speak he of the spirit which they that believe on should receive so that river he's talking about is speaking about the life giving ministry of the holy spirit flowing through the saints and he likens it to a river if you know anything about a river it is not static hallelujah one time they were doing a tour for us in the u.s and just the history of america and they showed you know a, a particular river that was flowing it looked like just a tiny river but it flowed right into the sea and then they were telling a lot of stories around it you know 
it was used to generate electricity at one point you know at the infancy of the whole history of, of america but i was i was intrigued by the fact that what you would call a small river they said sometimes when the rains are very heavy i mean it could just fill a particular space and i was just watching that river the bible says out of your belly it doesn't mean out of your stomach no there's nothing in your stomach for the holy spirit there's it's just your digestive system when he says belly it doesn't mean your stomach is a prophetic expression are we together that from your innermost being your spirit watch this now so where does it flow from he never said it flows from the throne when you read revelations you will see that there is a river that flows from the throne am i right on that and that river brings healings the bible says that it flows to trees and the leaves are for the healing of the nations now jesus is speaking and he says out of your belly that when you receive the spirit something happens and out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters the question is it flows to where flows to where in the similitude of the river that flows from the throne because now a throne has been established within you where christ is lord and there is a parallel of what happened that john saw in the throne that a river came out from the throne and it brought life it brought healing and because you have given allowance for that throne to be replicated within you there must also be a parallel expression that a river begins to flow and that that river flows through you it brings healing you want to know what the river does go to ezekiel chapter 47 he measured a thousand cubits it was to my ankle he measured a thousand cubits it was to my knees he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and the bible says it was an overflowing river please give it to us and as the river flow it begins to bring every death into life that's what it does it's a life-giving river let it flow right here right now afterwards he measured a thousand and it was a river i could not pass over for the waters were risen waters to swim in and a river that could not be passed over watch now verse 6 verse 6 please he said son of man he brought me and caused me to return and you know to the brink of the river verse 7 there's something i'm looking for and when he saw that he saw many trees on one side and on the other verse 8 and he said that this one they go down to the desert where does the river go to towards the east of the country and towards the desert and into the sea and he said it comes into the sea and the waters waters there talks of men the waters shall be healed that when that river flows it gets into waters and then brings healing verse 8 I, verse 9 i think you it is i'm looking for where the fish it shall come to pass that everything that lives which move it whithersoever the river shall come it shall what look at this mystery it is already alive but that if it touches that river it gets life indeed and then it says and there shall be a great multitude of fish say harvest one more time say harvest because the waters shall come for they shall be healed and everything shall live whither the river cometh that's the implication of the ministry of the holy spirit that when the holy spirit is allowed to find expression in an individual now watch this there are two ways the holy spirit makes a vessel a worthy conduit of power number one it is called renewal it's an inner walking of the spirit so when the holy spirit comes he does not just come to empower you the goal is to empower you but it does not start with empowerment watch this now it starts with sanctification and renewal now there are two levels of sanctification theologically there is instant sanctification that happens to your spirit man at salvation but there is progressive sanctification that happens by your engaging the ministry of the word and the holy spirit are we together most people 
think when the Holy Spirit comes, his next assignment is to produce power. It is the reason why the Holy Spirit can barely find expression through them. When the Spirit of God comes upon any life, and listen, if you are a man of God in ministry, listen, it will help you to know how to raise and train people. When you expose people to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the first thing to teach them about the Holy Spirit is not empowerment. Empowerment is a latter ministry of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, the first thing is sanctification and renewal. This is the first dimension of transformation. Sanctification and renewal is an inner work. I think Paul was talking about husbands and wives in Ephesians chapter 5 and I think verse 26. He talks about the woman being the church that she is washed by the water, the washing of the water by the word. How does he sanctify and cleanse? By the washing of the water and the word. How does God sanctify and cleanse? He purifies your conscience. He purifies your mentality. There is the work of sanctification and renewal that happens to that believer. Then when you are sanctified and renewed, the next level of transformation is called enlightenment. You can be sanctified and renewed and not enlightened. So there are two phases to, trans to transformation. One is called renewal, sanctification that produces renewal. That one is not giving you a new information. It's destroying the old man and the whole software that causes that old man to be fruitful in your life. But then when that cleaning process is done, he needs to now begin to show you the ways of the Spirit. It's called enlightenment. Paul prayed that prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 down to 19. That the eyes of your understanding, that is the inner work of the Spirit. Notice he never started with power. Even though power was later introduced in the subject. So that the eyes of your understanding, that's how it starts. Being enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints now power can come verse 19 and the exceeding greatness of his power to us world to who believe according to the working of his mighty power let me tell you this i have learned this by experience and by the message of god i have seen people violate this formula and remain powerless in the spirit i have seen people honor this formula and evolve into commendable levels of power you never will be able to transmute the power of the Holy Spirit beyond the level of alignment and allowance that your person as a vessel gives him that means if you give the Holy Spirit this little room that is how small his power will flow through you the possibilities that should be produced from your life as a result of abundance of power never happen. The reason is because there is so much the Holy Spirit wants to push through you as a vessel and as a channel. But your disalignment, bankruptcy of sanctification, renewal and enlightenment does not allow him, does not allow his power to flow through you. This is true. The difference between my yesterday version and my today version is not necessarily my size, it's not necessarily my voice, it's not necessarily the platform. It is the level of the yieldedness to have allowed the Holy Spirit to do an inner work. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. This inner work takes a long time. It's not something that is done in one week. The inner work is likened to clearing a drainage clearing a drainage have you seen people try to clear a, a drainage that is blocking the flow of water drainage one of the days I was going to visit which department now I cannot remember and it was raining seriously and you know the, the roads you could barely see the road because there was water everywhere and I looked at the drainage and it was clear that the drainage was blocked something had blocked the drainage and the water was just spilling all over the road that's what happens to people spiritually all those debris all those those things those those things that fill your heart are we together when the Holy Spirit comes he begins to walk it gradually 
taking all those things out of you and when he clears that drainage there can be a flow and once there is that flow life begins to come from you to people you will know that that drainage has been cleared because of the abundance of the miraculous that flows through your hands you will see an ease in spiritual operation you will begin to see that it does not take time again for you to pray for the sick there is that 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 debris had been taken away and the flow is there for many christians including pastors the channel for the holy spirit to flow his power and life to the nations has been blocked with all kinds of nonsense jealousy competition flesh worldliness carnality everything like debris has been heaped upon it so we come to people and we say in the name of jesus and you can literally sense almost for want of word like a struggle from the holy spirit because you are the only vessel available there that he can use and we make the holy spirit look like a liar the reason is because of disalignment in the vessels according to the power that works within you the sick through your life will be healed not just according to the abundance of grace according to the power according to the allowance that your yieldedness allows when i found this i began a project to pray you know i said god expand me expand me if it means to change the wine skin change it expand me because the kind of revival we want to see fall upon the nations will not, it, they, you cannot put a very narrow channel. It needs abundance of life giving water. Are we together? Someone who comes to you and says, I have been plagued by a curse for 100 years. It's destroyed my grandfather, great grandfather. Let me tell you, theo, theoretically speaking, it looks like all you need to say is, Satan, get lost. You try it and see if it will go. It's more than what you see written here. The eyes of your understanding must be open to see that there are rules of engagement. There are men who will carry God and will literally be dripping the life and the power of God. You look at certain situations without speaking because of the abundance of that power. It's like torrents of power flows from you to everybody around you. You are bringing miracles and healing. Every time people see you, you are welcome. You know why? You are welcome because you are a carrier of genuine power apostle please there is a situation here what is it my family is about to go into disarray no not when i'm there i am an ambassador of the kingdom in the name of jesus and whilst you are speaking you are speaking there is abundance of power the holy ghost says thank you for being a yielded vessel because the amount of spiritual power required to bring the result that family desires your yieldedness can allow it let me tell you this every manifestation of the spirit that seems difficult to find expression through your life is not necessarily difficult because god does not want it to manifest it is that the holy spirit has to make do with the limitations of your yieldedness hear me the holy spirit has been forced in many lives and many churches to make do with the level of yieldedness so we have not been able to see his power as a generation we pray for 100 people and maybe one two three four just one testimony one miracle there is like a multitude of people hungry and thirsty and imagine that they are standing before a tap and it is coming drop by drop do you know how you starve those people of life imagine someone coming with his bucket to receive water from you and it is coming drop by drop the problem is not the dam the problem is you have not known how to open that spiritual valve the holy spirit brought you to church tonight because some of you your family members cannot wait again they cannot wait again if that power flows drop by drop all of them will be dead before you become yielded you need to expand that capacity when you open a tab sometimes in less than one minute it fills the bucket you carry yours and another person can come you carry yours and another person can come for many of us we have piled people like around the queue because we as those conduits and those vessels are not yielded enough 
now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think but he's limited ah. so for the family begging for bread and not seeing the hand of God for the person sick in the hospital do you know Kai, I've, I've visited a few people in the hospital you know through my time in ministry I will never forget a dear woman we got to the hospital that time and she was confessing the word confessing the word confessing the word she will tell her children play me scripture she came from the word of faith this woman kept confessing the scripture and never recovered till she died when she died that thing disturbed me it was not the death it was that honestly maybe if i were not born a christian eh, there are many questions i would have asked you i can't you can't you can't shrug that away and put it under the carpet that a woman was confessing the word genuinely confessing the word someone will pray on a handkerchief she will place it on her head confessing the word i shall not die everything was going down till she really died and i said no this thing is misrepresenting god too much now i know the answer the answer is my sermon tonight according to the power the difference between joshua selman and tl osborne is not jesus christ it's not the Holy Spirit. It's that one has decided to not just be like a, a giant GP tank, but a tap opening in its full strength, whereas someone is still dropping droplets. My personal cry to God is that whatever it would take to open that tap, there is thirst in the land. There is thirst over families, economic thirst, spiritual thirst, there are things that believers have prayed for and it refused to go. There are conditions that seem not to answer. And you are saying, why? Let me tell you this. Every time you say, Lord, why is it that we trusted you but we did not see this manifestation? 90% of the time, aside from a few other explanations which we'll consider in other subjects, but 90% of the time, what happens to men is not a reflection of what God wanted to happen. It was the bankruptcy of the flow of power so the next time you say God use me what you are saying is God expand me expand me expand me so that when I stand before a sick person there is enough channel of that power to flow when I stand before somebody going through economic hardship he can do whatever it takes to do humanly but I can deposit something divine upon his head are we listening now there are some of you seated here right now your loved ones are sick you are having financial crisis there are all kinds of oppression some of you your sleep last night was a nightmare I'm not glorifying Satan I'm just trying to be honest with you some of you whilst you are seated here right now you are some of the most diligent believers with character holiness and integrity i know of but nothing has happened in your life from january till now you will not bribe you will not cheat yet you have not seen one real manifestation of the mercy of god something is wrong something is wrong our generation has to bring an answer as to why a woman will pray and fast on a sick bed and not recover till she dies as to why somebody will say i am a child of god i will not take bribes and he will remain poor till his children cannot go to school we need answers the assignment of the church is to bring answers if we keep fooling ourselves shying away in irresponsibility and just creating all kinds of pictures and making it look like it is problems of members sooner or later they will leave us and go to seek whatever they feel can help them let me tell you the truth the church was designed to be a place of answers and i challenge every servant of the living god including myself that while we commend ourselves for the little god is doing we must be honest with ourselves the world is asking questions we are either not hearing or being deafened by our arrogance over little and we are not staying to get real answers 
we need answers tell me why the cancer plaguing me does not seem to reduce after prayer and yet the bible says by his stripes i am healed tell me why integrity does not seem to reward in my life tell me why i raise my child in the fear of the lord and he becomes something else where else should i go for answers i've gone to the school it attempted to give a few answers I went to intelligent people it attempted to give a few answers I listened to my government it attempted to give a few answers you have told me that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain now I have come give me answers as to why my prayer over Satan does not seem to drive him give me answers as to why my confessing of the word does not seem to produce result can I tell you the person who stands with God to say Lord use me to answer this question will be about the most valuable person in this generation use me to answer this question use me to answer this question use me to rewrite this narrative that you become an answer to a question that is in the hearts of men is it true that when we say thus saith the Lord it really comes to pass all other factors being constant you don't say yes, you prove it with your life. By gaining power with God like Jacob and then coming to multitudes and even nations and saying, thus say yet the Lord. When you bring the results, you can teach us what you have done. And we can see truly that you have created a pathway for a generation to know God the more. I look forward to hearing genuine, verifiable cases of people who died before their time and were brought back to life genuinely not just by men of God but by members they trained that a lady will go home and say my mom died and I know it is not her time and I prayed and did engage this and my mom coughed back to life and said I was on my way going but I had your voice and you called me back I look forward to hearing terrorists coming to church to testify that we caught somebody and we saw angels. Angels appeared physically and said, if you don't lose these people now, you will see the limitations of guns and bows and spears. And we decided to lead the people out, not just to deliver them. Can I tell you this? Sincerely, if the church does not attend to the needs that are confronting society the church will be extinct ah but not in my lifetime not in my lifetime i belong to that generation that will say maranatha come everything come your power come your wisdom come your glory come according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church in and through joshua selman so whilst you are seated here, you are not just becoming a believer to get a job, get promotion. You are receiving what empowers you and planting a hunger within your spirit. Some of you after this program, you will go and have a retreat for two, three days and say, Lord, I'm not looking for power to satisfy my lust. The kind of alignment I need to submit to, to for God's sake, host more of you. Let it happen to me. I look forward to our worshipers raising one song and you will hear that everywhere that song was sung that the people received healings the people received breakthroughs are we together that a woman is about to give birth in the hospital and it's clear she will lose her life and she says there is a song that came from a worshiper it, it, the song trapped presence the song trapped covenant the song trapped something mighty something holy Play that song for me and while the song comes supernaturally the woman gives birth because the song has become a language and an instruction to creation I look forward to times where people will carry the sick and right from the gate before service starts as soon as they cross it's like they cross from one dimension and enter another and while wheeling someone as soon as he passes that gate he says i don't know i feel like i want to stand up and he jumps up there 
and all we come to celebrate are empty wheelchairs here let me tell you this if you do not love Jesus the message tonight will not make sense to you the message tonight is not for careless give me believers tea and bread believers the message tonight is for people who are hungry for more greater glory that you know that there is more God wants to do in your life by the time you carry the more of God he will send you anywhere anywhere and scatter anything that wants to stand your way are we together you shake someone's hand and say give me your hands as you shake that hand that is the end of a season into another because you carry God not in theory you carry God genuinely you carry God demons principalities you step into a place without bragging without making noise you bring your reality you have become a host that is enlarged enough for God to flow through a host and large enough for God to flow through listen to me the Holy Spirit desires to move upon the body of Christ again there is scarceness of power the fish dying in the sea souls running away from the things of God a whole generation is making mockery boldness over mocking God is increasing because the evidence that tames the pride of men is not there in our lives again so anybody can speak and say whatever it is all this church thing leave all this church thing use your common sense they are right until a generation rewrites that narrative one day I pray it does not happen that someone looks at your child and say young man the time you use for prayer the time you use for fasting the time you use for the study of the word, use it and do something useful in your life. Run away from this scam called the church. Ah, with my life, I say, God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid that one day there will be an organized confrontation over the church. A group of wealthy, intelligent, prosperous, enlightened young men now throw a challenge to the church and say here is our evidence we hate God but all things have been put in place bring to me evidence why I should love Jesus Christ you have told me that he sorts the matters of my life in heaven and you say he also sorts my matters now bring it I have an assignment to make a contribution towards tearing a generation to find God genuinely genuinely to find that lost treasure the woman had ten by whatever carelessness one fell we have an assignment as a generation to find that treasure where is it where is it once upon a time men held it but right now it's fallen maybe slumber made it fall i've taught you how to find missing things get the candle light it you see that now the spirit of man is a candle of the lord the holy spirit rests upon that candle and the light that comes from there then you get a broom the broom talks of your zeal your staying power your determination to remain till you find god and begin to sweep and the Bible says eventually someone maybe someone that someone is a generation will find it and you can call on others in righteousness and say by mercy I have found a treasure this is it I know the reason why cancers are not healed I have found it I know the reason why believers trust God for increase and still remain poor I have found it I know the reason why despite the prayers over demons they don't go I have found it and usually people will say you are a joker others say they found it too and you say no I found it for real let me prove it and you will demonstrate the reality of God's life here and now 
by the time you bring 100 cases of verified cancer patients 100 and every one of them with serious doctors proving it becomes impossible for anybody to doubt that something is here that is worth considering let me tell you the truth I've had the honor of meeting a few people who are not Christians and I've been amazed at their open-heartedness that if what we are bringing is substance enough they are open to listen open to listen that means the person can tell you I'm not a Christian I'm a scientist but if you can demonstrate to me the reality of the God life I am more than open to investigate it and if it will lead to my conversion so be it there is an opportunity like never before to bring the nations to the cross we are in a kairos moment as the body of Christ listen to me your assignment tonight is to cry that that inner work of the spirit empowerment is not the problem it is the inner work there is a lot of debris that needs to be taken out of our life seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and then to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the bible says who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame as powerful as God is when he became a man in the person of Jesus he did not come empowered by default even though he was the word he showed us how a man can stretch his capacity in the spirit until he's able to host the spirit without measure and the Bible says as he is so are we that means we can host heavier dimensions of the spirit by grace and administer it in such a way that imprints the name of the Lord over our generation I'm praying for you I don't know who is willing to join me on this cry tonight I don't know who is willing to join me on this journey to say I'm not satisfied Lord I I thank you for what you have shown me I thank you for what I have seen but I tremble before you tonight in sackcloth and ashes asking you by grace and by mercy that you will do that work of purifying you will do that work of sanctification you will do that work of renewal you will do that work of enlightenment and do that work of empowerment within my vessel within my person that i will give the holy spirit greater flow let the power that works within me be in such a degree and proportion that can allow the river flow to the nations open your mouth wherever you want begin to pray open your mouth wherever you want begin to pray according to the power that works within us it is a press for more a press for more a press for more hunger for greater glory unto him be glory in the church unto him be glory in koinonia through koinonia unto him be glory in my life and through my life take a minute to pray you're not wasting your time restore the flow of authentic apostolic power restore the flow of authentic manifestations of the power of God the investments of the spirit let it not be scarce in our generation again deliver us from being noisemakers oh God and bring us to a place where we communicate the substance of the spirit life to our generation let the margin of error be covered let it be covered let it be covered let the margin of trial and error experimentation let it be eroded from our lives bring us to a place of accuracy and mastery bring us to a place of accuracy and mastery take a minute and pray ladies and gentlemen you are praying because you love God there is a dimension of prosperity that the church must capture it is important for kingdom come it is important for the betterment of believers there is a dimension of healing power 
that needs to be imported by aligned vessels there is a dimension of dominion a dimension of increase a dimension of invincibility over elemental forces this is our mandate in this season let a hungry believer pray let a passionate man of God pray take time to pray you're not wasting your time let's raise a cry as a global family raise a cry as a body of believers visit us oh God with your power genuine apostolic authentic power the power that is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think enlarge our capacities in the spirit to host greater dimensions of your glory indeed let the river flow let it flow to bring healing to the nations let it flow to bring healing to the families let it flow to bring healing to careers destinies Let men again call upon the name of the Lord by the efficiency of our witness. Let many come to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Pray. Do that inner work in me. The work of purifying. The work of cleansing. The work of renewal. The work of enlightenment. Expand my capacity in the spirit realign me realign me realign me realign me in the name of jesus In the name of Jesus, in the name of